Peconic, The Economy of Certainty, An Introduction to the Topology of Islamic Legal Theory by Aaron Zizel, Harvard University, 1984, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Following on from Ghazali, more concisely, Jassas, who dies 370, commensurate with 981, observes that in matters based on experience, there is no way to draw limits and to fix a minimum boundary. There was thus general agreement that the minimum number of reporters for a mutawatir tradition was unascertainable. The Asulis are content to speak of a quote-unquote large number. The basis for the certainty of this kind of tradition was, of course, the exclusion of chance agreement and, more importantly, of collusion. A large number would be necessary to exclude these possibilities under ordinary circumstances. But under controlled conditions, numbers could no longer be significant. Ibn Hazm insists on this point. A large quote from Ibn Hazm here. If you set a man to invent a long invent a long false tale he can do it this is not known this is known absolutely from experience but if you put two men in two houses so that they cannot meet and have one produce a false narrative there is no way for the tales to agree from beginning to end no way at all it does happen but so infrequently that we hardly ever see it that two talents coincide for a few words or so and we have seen two poets produce the same hemistich this we have seen only twice in our life. As for what the literary cr- critics call al-muwarada, al al-muwarada, apologies, no Arabic given, in which the poetic talents agree on a number of verses, the cited cases are tall tales, absolutely unsound. They are nothing but instances of plagiarism and mutual borrowing among poets. End of quote. The usual stipulation of a great number was not sufficient for a number of Transoxanian Hanafi scholars. They posed stricter so-called controverted conditions, mukhtalaf fi. In the usul of a sarkhasi, who died 483 commensurate with 1090, a mutawatir tradition is defined as one transmitted by a group of people to whom one cannot imagine their collusion on account of the greatness of their number and the distances between their habitations. In the Asul of Fakhruddin al-Bazdawi, who died 482 to 1089, the people are said to be such that their number cannot be counted, nor can one conceive of their collusion on account of their number, their probity, and the, inst- and the distances between their habitations. Leaving aside the question of probity for the moment, one notes that the two conditions of being innumerable and of living in widely separated habitations are related, and in fact they are treated by Al-Ghazali as a single condition, which he rejects. Both Sarkhasi and Bazdawi were theological conservatives, and these conditions may well represent an old Hanafi tradition. The condition of separate habitations may be directed against local hadith, such as those of Medina. The stipulation of probity calls for separate consideration, since it raises the question of the use of Motawatir reports in a theological context. The controverted conditions do not appear explicitly in the Mizan of al-Bazdawi. Theologically minded student of Samarqandi, nor does Abdul Aziz al-Bukhari, who died in 730, commensurate with 1329. The commentator of Bazdawi takes the three conditions seriously. They are, he says, more effect they are, he says, more effective in precluding the possibility of collusion and clearer in refuting the opponent, but are not really conditions in the sense that knowledge by Tawatar depends on them. Now probity includes adherence to Islam, and in order to show that this condition is not a real one, Bukhari notes that Bazdawi rejects certain Zoroastrian and Jurist reports for which Tawatar was claimed on the grounds that the numerical condition is not met at every stage of their transmission. If probity were really necessary, then these reports could have been dismissed out of hand. In fact, another explanation is possible. Bazdawi bases his definition on the use of Mutawatir tradition in Islamic law. Under ordinary circumstances, the traditions of unbelievers, Mutawatir or not, do not constitute a source of Islamic law. This point can be obscured because the texts speak of Akhbar reports. 
whether the context is a religious one or not. In theological circles, the Mutawatir report had quite early become a weapon with which to meet the challenges of various forms of scepticism. In this theological context, Muslims were not adverse to supporting their claims by referring to the experiences of Jews and Christians, which confirmed the historicity of prophetic miracles. Thus, Ibn al-Rawandi, who died circa 200, commensurate with 864, replying to the Mu'tazila criticisms of the Shia for not recognizing knowledge based upon the Mutawatir report, says that, quote, not all of them hold this view, for we found Hisham ibn al-Hakam died 198-814, claiming that the occurrence of a Mutawatir report imposes knowledge even when the reporters are unbelievers. Ibn al-Rawandi wants to show that even among the Shia, there were those who accepted the Tawatir doctrine in its most liberal version. The stipulation of probity thus harks back to the use of Mutawatir report within Islamic circles before the theological version became dominant by reason of its greater generality. Most works of Usul either present the theological formulation without reference to the older doctrine or dismiss the more stringent conditions as theologically unsophisticated. Yet the old conditions do sometimes appear. Apart from the Hanafi works, we find we found that the Udda of the Hanbali Abu Ya'la ibn al-Farrah, who dies 458 circa, uh, commensurate with 1065, states that the reporters of Mutawatir tradition must be such that it is not conceivable that they conspire to tell an untruth, either because of their great number or because of their religion and probity. Stay tuned for the next title, which is the classification of concurrent knowledge and many more parts.